Hi friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about speed control of induction motor by injecting EMF into the rotor. The first one here, the frequency of the injected EMF, the frequency of injected EMF, injected EMF is equals to, can you tell me what is the frequency of injected EMF? Where we are injecting the EMF injected into the rotor, right? So what is the frequency of injected EMF? That frequency should be equals to rotor frequency. That is nothing but slip times of the stator frequency. The EMF, injected EMF frequency is rotor frequency. It must and should be equals to rotor frequency. That is nothing but slip times of the stator frequency. Slip times of the stator frequency. This is very important. Then after, I told you full rotor constant. Full rotor constant, nothing but K into actually V square into S by R2. But here I am taking the ER square, resultant EMF square, VR square, resultant EMF square, ER square into S by R2. ER is the sum of the injected EMF and actual rotor EMF. For example, here we have a full rotor constant, nothing but the rotor resistance constant and K also constant. So to get, to get full rotor constant, this ER square into S should be constant. ER square into S should be constant. Nothing but S into ER square is equals to constant. Nothing but S is inversely proportional to ER square. S is inversely proportional to ER square. Nothing but if ER increases, slip decreases. If ER increases, slip decreases, then speed increases. This is called as super synchronous speed. Super synchronous speed. If ER decreases, slip increases, then speed reduces, this is called as sub-synchronous speed. This is called as sub-synchronous speed and this is called as super-synchronous speed. So sub-synchronous speed and super-synchronous speed. Sub-synchronous speed and super-synchronous speed. If ER increases, if ER decreases, this is important up to here. Right? Now, now see here. Now, case one. Now, case one. Case one. What is that case one? See here. For example, this is my EMF of the general rotor. And I am injecting EMF into the rotor. For example, another EMF. This is my injected EMF. The EMF injected into the rotor, which is exactly in phase, which is exactly in phase. For example, this is 100 volts, this is 50 volts. What is total voltage? The total voltage is ER. ER is equals to actual EMF plus injected EMF. Actual EMF plus injected EMF. So finally, ER increases. So speed also speed also, if ER increases, speed also increases. So this is called as super synchronous speed in case one. Next case two, case two, case two. What is that? For example, this is my EMF of the rotor and I am injecting EMF. This is my injected EMF which is exactly out of phase, which is exactly out of phase. For example, this is 100, this is 50. Then what is the resultant EMF? The resultant EMF is equals to E minus EI. Actually, EMF minus injected EMF. So finally, whatever, ER decreases. If ER decreases, speed decreases. That is called as sub-synchronous speed. 
that is called as subsynchronous speed this is case 1 and case 2 case 1 and case 2 super synchronous speed and subsynchronous speed emf injected into the rotor in phase emf injected into the rotor exactly exactly out of phase here er increases here er decreases er increases here er decreases so this is these are the common things but here we have a special things two special cases these are the two common cases again we have a two special cases okay is it okay i'm going to rough this or i am doing here see here see here in case 3 see here in case 3 case 3 the emf actually in rotor is this one e now emf injected into the rotor this is my injected emf with some angle with some angle phi of course emf is injected but which is in phase with some angle so what is the resultant value the resultant er is this one is the vector sum is the vector sum of these two yes sir er tell me er increases or decreases er increases speed increases is called as super synchronous speed is called as super synchronous speed and very important point when emf injected into the rotor with some angle then here we can control the power factor here we can control the power factor also here we can control the power factor also here we can control the power factor when emf injected into the rotor with some angle and also we have a case 4 how it is case 4 case 4 emf injected into the rotor with out of phase with some angle out of phase with some angle for example i will draw here for example i will draw here case 4 case 4 case 4 emf injected into the rotor with some angle for example emf injected into the rotor with some angle so now tell me what is the resultant value the resultant emf is reduces resultant emf reduces nothing but speed also reduces but here also we can control power factor we can control power factor here also we can control power factor here also we can control power factor these are the case 1 case 2 case 3 case 4 generally in induction machine there is no possibility to control power factor everyone saying the same statement in induction machine there is no possibility to control the power factor that cylinder but this is not 100% correct we can control the power factor in induction machine only one case that is emf injecting with some angle not in phase not out of phase with some angle with some angle emf injected with some angle then we can control the power factor in these two cases we can control the power factor in these two cases we can control the power factor this is the speed control of induction machine the speed control of induction machine by emf injected into the rotor emf injected into the rotor the first most important question the frequency of injected emf is the frequency of injected emf should be equals to rotor frequency or slip times of the stator frequency slip times of the stator frequency s yes? 